Going into the midterms, many people had written off progressive Democrats. In fact, before any ballots had even been counted in the general election in the midterms, one prominent Democratic think tank was warning that the party was seen as too out of touch, too extreme, or to put it simply, too progressive. But now that most of the votes are in, surprise, progressives actually had a really good night. Not only did every one of the six members of the squad easily win re-election, but as one headline put it, a new squad is heading to the House. They include people like Florida's Maxwell Frost, Illinois' Delia Ramirez, Texas's Greg Kassar, and Pennsylvania's Summer Lee. All of them people of color, all of them under the age of 40, supporters of Medicare for All, supporters of the Green New Deal giving progressives in the House who are already there a big boost in backing for those priorities. Some of these wins made history, too. Maxwell Frost is the first member of Gen Z elected to Congress. Delia Ramirez became the first Latina elected to Congress from Illinois, while Summer Lee is the first black congresswoman elected from the state of Pennsylvania. And even though these wins were in blue districts, they weren't necessarily foregone conclusions. Lee faced staunch opposition from the pro-Israel Group APAC and its super PAC, they dropped more than $3 million in attack ads against Lee after she spoke in support of Palestinian human rights. And both Lee and Greg Kassar have been affiliated with the Democratic Socialists of America, the DSA, at a time when the GOP and Fox have been going all out to demonize any mention of the word socialism on the Democratic side. Well, guess what? Despite attacks from the Republican right and the Democratic center, the left is doing just fine. So, question, how did these progressives beat predictions, polling, dark money, and more to win their seats? Let's ask them. Joining me now, Texas Representative-elect Greg Kassar and Pennsylvania Representative-elect Summer Lee. Thank you both for joining me. Congratulations on your victories. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Summer Lee. Not only do we have progressive newcomers like yourself heading to Congress, but you have the six squad members all easily sailing to re-election. Do you think Tuesday night was a stamp of approval for the progressive wing of the Democratic Party? I think that, yes, absolutely, right? I think even more than that, though, is just the showing that we saw, particularly from Gen Z, right, which is one of our emerging generations and soon to be one of our largest voting blocks, right? We showed out. We came against institutional backgrounds and barriers to win, to win decisively. And I think it shows that despite, you know, the ads, the racially coded messaging, uh, the fear-mongering, that we still prevail and in areas like mine really shows that our values resonate with people. Greg, do you agree with that? Do you, when you hear uh, a th the third way think tank, for example, this centrist democratic think tank saying the party's gone too extreme, too left, does your victory, does Summer Lee's victory, does John Featherman's victory in Pennsylvania, is that a kind of rejoinder to that way of thinking? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is that we are asking for are not extreme. It is what the vast majority of working people, including in places like Pennsylvania and down here in Texas, believe. We're just talking about people having the right to live and for you to have Medicare for all. So when whether you see a doctor is not based on whether you're rich or poor, that we should still have a planet for future generations uh, and an economy that treats people decently. These are the things that most people believe in. Uh, and I think that the more the Democratic Party stands for that boldly alongside working people, even if it's against big corporate interests, that's when and how we can win. And Greg Kassar, you mentioned down here in Texas, I've got to ask, there's been much talk about the Latino shift rightwards in South Texas, especially. Democrats did take two out of three closely watched South Texas races. Uh, Vicente Gonzalez defeated Myra Flores in the 34th district. And the very conservative Democrat Henry Cuellar won re-election in the 28th. Republican Monica de la Cruz won in the 15th. What does all of that tell you about the way Texas Latinos are leaning politically? Well, I was elected in my majority Latino district uh, that stretches throughout Central Texas all the way down to San Antonio, uh, won in my primary on the most bold and progressive and unapologetic platform of any of the candidates. We won four to one. And again, then in my majority Latino district, won by an over 40-point margin uh, on Tuesday night. It really shows that Latinos... They're not necessarily Democratic Party members, Republican mem Party members. They are folks that want to see this democracy work for working people. Immigrant families that came 
to this country to transform their lives are looking for betterments in their own life. And that's what we need to be standing for. But that red wave, despite tens of millions of dollars in right wing and corporate money, did not move uh, Latinos to the right. In fact, every single one of those districts you mentioned, Mehdi, that uh, voted for uh, President Biden, each and every one of those stayed blue. But we've got to expand those majorities. And if we want to expand them, it's not by watering down our asks. It's by actually showing up for working class people, which is overwhelmingly who Latinos are in places like Texas. And Summerlee, Greg Kassar just mentioned millions of dollars from dark money groups. I have to ask, you overcame a mountain of dark money, including uh, from APAC, a feat not many have accomplished. How did you pull it off? We build coalitions. You know, I think that, and we have to be very clear, it's not easy to overcome that amount of money. That's why we saw so many folks who came close. But when you have to go with through the ads, the ad spends, the, the smear campaigns, it's so difficult. And it really just robs voters of the right to make decisions that are best for them. But what we know is that our message still prevailed. We stayed focused. We kept talking about the things that we care about. We kept organizing. And we had a huge, fast coalition of folks, multiracial, multi-generation, from every corner of not just this district, but the Commonwealth really fighting back and punching back and saying that this is not uh, the message that we want to prevail here, right? This this politics of fear and division isn't going to isn't going to work any longer. Uh, we were able to do it because we had help, but we were able to do it because folks know me, they know our movement, and they know that our progressive values are what they need. Working class folks want to see themselves reflected on the ballot. Uh, black and brown folks want to see themselves reflected on the ballot, and that's what we've done, and that's how, how we are going to continue to deliver. And Greg Kassar, I have to ask, I saw someone point out the other day that you maybe avoided commenting on Israel to avoid uh, facing the same fate that Somali and others felt. Was that a strategic move on your part? Well, no, we um, got asked about it. Of course, there was, uh, there is this continued myth that progressives are somehow anti-Semitic, and that's absolutely not true. So we made sure to put out there plainly that we want to make sure you are safe, whether you're Israeli, Palestinian, or otherwise. And... Uh, I share with Summer uh, the demand for Palestinian human rights and the fact that um, we should make sure that any foreign aid is not being used to violate anyone's rights, uh, because we just need to uh, stand up for those baseline rights regardless of who it is. I myself came from immigrants organizing and opposing, for example, child detention camps in our own country uh, here on our border, and I will oppose that no matter where it is in the world. Uh, and we have to be able to stand up to against those sorts of things no matter who, who it's coming from. So last question for you both. You're entering Congress January the 3rd, new members of the House. To each of you, what is your top priority as a member of Congress when you get there? Summerlee. You know, I think that, you know, as an extension of so many of the other folks who have come in before us who are fighting for progressive values, that's what I'm going there for also. I think that my race has really shown how important it is that we get dark money out of politics, right? It's... It's, it is absolutely a threat to our democracy, to our democratic institutions, but mostly to our ability to build a reflective democracy. We can't move on progressive values. We can't move on the things that black and brown and other marginalized communities care most about, whether it be uh, common sense gun reform or the ability to talk about human rights, if we are always going to be outspent, if we're going to be attacked in the ways that we are. So that's really important to me. And Greg Kassar, your number one issue policy area that you're going to be focused on? If we want to achieve the transformational policy that we want to restore uh, Roe v. Wade, if we want to tackle the climate crisis, we have to build a democracy that includes all of us. And so I come from community-based organizing. And I think our job that I'm not going to be doing alone, because I'm proud to be joined by Summer and Maxwell and Delia and so many others, is to go into our communities and re-inspire people that this democracy can work for them. Because states like Texas used to not be this way. This is where Roe v. Wade was born. This is the place where the Voting Rights Act, we had a president that signed that here from Texas. And we can get back there. Uh, a lot of Republicans thought today was the day that they would be gloating about wiping progressives off the map. And instead, you have more progressives heading to Congress than any time in modern history, more young progressives of color headed to Congress than any time in American history. And that's really the news of, of the election.